Welcome to DNA Week 4. This week is really exciting because we're going to be talking about how do we have a relationship with a God that we can't see. You know, that is that even though we can't see Him, a relationship with our Father in Heaven and our Saviour in Jesus is really important to our faith. We've been talking about all of these different foundational things of our DNA as a follower of Jesus. And and this is one that is so truly vital because we need to be at the pulse of, of our DNA. And that is through having a relationship with our Father in heaven. You know, there was many moments that we can see this primarily through Jesus. Jesus turned to his Father so many times in prayer and in these times and they they were really important moments especially a time that came just before Jesus was apprehended to then be put on the cross he was there crying out to his father in heaven praying that he would take away the burden we find that Jesus does fortunately for us continue to take on the burden of sin and die upon the cross but it was it's important for us to see that even Jesus was in conversation with his father in relationship with his father and it's really great for us to know that in our foundation that our greatest example in Jesus was so too in relationship with his father but let's look at it like this it's that our relationship with God is in response to God it's because he was first in the way that we he was first he has offered us salvation and it's our response our relationship with God is our response to God let's have a look at it like this I'm really quite introverted I know it's, it's strange, but me here right now, it's quite difficult for me to be doing this. I'm really um, uh, introverted and I, I would always take the opportunity in a large room of people to find the quiet corner. Whereas my wife is quite different to this. She, she's an extrovert. Um, she loves people and she will hunt after the largest group of people and try and meet as many new people as possible. I'm introverted, I look for the quiet place. My wife is extroverted and she looks for people to talk to and she gets a thrill out of being able to talk and meet with new people. So think of it like this, that God, our Father in heaven, is the greatest extrovert. He is constantly seeking uh, to have the opportunity to be in relationship with you and it takes us just to respond. You may feel like me that you're an introvert, but I can tell you the best conversations you can ever have is with your Father in heaven. So it's really important that we have this relationship because he wants to converse with us and be a part of our life and help us walk through our journey of faith and help us see our future and our plans that he has for us. It's really important for us to have relationship. A great thing to look at in the Bible is these things called covenants. Um, Firstly, you have probably wondered what the heck is a covenant and why is this really important? Well, first of all, a covenant is an agreement. It's actually a legal binding contract between two parties, right? So a covenant takes a sacrifice from each party in the agreement. Um, Benefits come from it. But it's, it's in the keeping from that covenant that the benefits come. And, and negatives come with it if you don't keep it. You see, the Bible has um, a few of these covenants between God and his creation. To the, to the new covenant, which is the last of them, which we have Jesus. And the special thing in this covenant, covenant is that As I said in the beginning, a covenant requires sacrifice from both parties and this bond. But the thing about Jesus' new covenant is that it's freely available to us. It's in us accepting to him. We don't have to pay a bond or we no longer have to sacrifice to keep the covenant. But the covenant which he offers is so freely for us. He took the burden of the covenant upon himself. So there are 
five key covenants that, that happen throughout the Bible that we're going to look at. I'm going to glance over these, but I'm going to give you the opportunity for you to read these covenants together as a group just after I show us through these. First of all, there's the Noahic covenant. This covenant is about the flood. You know, the big flood where the entire earth is covered with water and this dude and a whole bunch of animals are in a boat and they're the ones that survive. Well, essentially how we get to this moment of the flood is because sin and disorder has run rampant throughout the earth and so many of God's creation are no longer following him and sin is running rampant. Basically, God decides to intervene in this moment and he brings this flood over the entire earth to kill off all of this sin. Noah and his family are the ones that survive, but God immediately regrets this decision and he makes a covenant with Noah saying that he will no longer end such life on this earth and that it's the quite opposite. He will pursue to... Um, pursue to preserve the life on earth and in particular his creation and we can see this covenant through the wonderful image of a rainbow secondly there is the abrahamic covenant this covenant in particular is about the promises that god makes to abraham and how abraham would and how he would bless Abraham and that from Abraham he would create a great nation and secondly that that nation would through God would bless all the earth. Thirdly there's the Mosaic Covenant. We know about this one being Moses on Mount Sinai uh, getting all of the the commandments and this one is that the God that Israel is God's treasured possessions and that they would inherit the land if they keep God's commandments. This, this, this covenant is about that as Israel is being set apart to be God's holy nation, that they had to keep God's commandments because that's what sets them apart. Fourthly is the Davidic uh, covenant. And this one is that God would build a house or a, a dynasty for David, that from his line great things would happen as David begins to build God's house, the temple. And finally, the fifth one that I'm going to share about, as I've already mentioned, is the new covenant. And this one is the final one, but definitely not the least of them, as I said, because it's this covenant that Jesus brings um, Last week, I spoke about the prophecies that Jesus fulfills, but within this one, Jesus came and completed all of the covenants before him, all of the promises and the blessings that were there that the Bible says um, God comes to complete them. But here's the great thing, that it's more than just completing. It said, the Bible tells us that it comes to be even better. Hebrews 8 verse 6. But in fact, the ministry Jesus has received is as superior to theirs as the covenant of which he is the mediator is superior to the old one, since the new covenant is established on better promises. See, what Jesus has brought with the new covenant is based on better promises. I love this. It is the new covenant that is not just better, but it is also eternal and unbreakable. God is first in our relationship and he has started it and we get to respond. Our relationship with God, with the response, our salvation, and we get to continue from there. Think of about it in this really simple imagery. You've got a set of AirPods, right? And you pull them out and you put them in your ear, right? You're never going to hear music if you don't pair up, if you don't pair your connection with them. You can have them in your ear, but you won't necessarily hear anything unless you're paired up. The thing about our relationship with God is it's a covenant. It's a pairing with our Father in heaven that we begin to hear him. So that's what today is all about, 
is that as we pair with God, as we join with God, is where we begin to hear Him. Our relationship with our God that we don't see is with us pairing and aligning our life with Him. You might say, so how do I have a relationship with a God that I can't see? Well, we can see that the dictionaries define a a relationship as a state of affairs between people, or it's the forming of a bond and the binding together. It's great how similar the word relationship and covenant is, and that's because a covenant really is about a relationship and a bond together relationships for us take sacrifice and Jesus tells us to um, follow him and to do that we must take up our cross or as I'm going to call it to be in practice and to be devoted to him Matthew 16 verse 24 says and Jesus told his disciples, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life would lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul? Or what shall a man give in return for his soul? You see, it's in our devotion to God, to Jesus, that we strengthen our relationship with Him. I mentioned my wife earlier on, Zoe. We started our relationship in probably a really awkward way by me asking her extremely awkwardly for her number at the end of a missions trip in an airport. Fortunately, she decided to agree and give me my number. It was one of the most awkward experiences of my life because I'm an introvert and I'm no good at this sort of stuff. And preceding that time, we returned home. Home for me and home for Zoe was exactly 435 kilometres apart from each other. And we were forced to build our relationship through talking, texting and FaceTiming on the phone because we had to get to know each other through uh, intentional conversations. There was nothing impulsive about it. We would call each other and we would talk to each other for hours each day. Our relationship with God takes devotion, intentionality. Reading the Word of God each day is vital to our faith. So we know the Word of God is alive and active and He speaks to us clearly through that time. I encourage you as you do it and take the first steps into reading the Bible to ask God each time you do it, what are you trying to say to me through this Scripture, God? Another important part of our devotion is through prayer think of prayer not as this holy thing of saying to God help me father but think of it as us pouring out to God what we desire and what we need and what we hope for for us and for others the bible tells us in Philippians 4 verse 6 do not be anxious about anything But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And also in Mark chapter 11, verse 24, Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. We are encouraged to pray to God. He wants us to spend our time. He wants us to to pray to Him so that He may hear our plea and our desire for things and for the others that we pray for. There's a great example in the Bible about a man named Daniel. 
Daniel, you see, he was in a prominent position in Babylon under the king, King Darius. He was King Darius's leader of all advisors. Daniel was a man who believed in God and his commandments, so he prayed three times a day. Now, some of the other advisors were jealous of the favor that Daniel saw, uh, that the king saw had in David. And they planned to have him killed. Knowing that he was a God-fearing man praying every day, what they did is they tricked the king into making a new rule that no one could pray to or worship another god than the king himself for 30 days, knowing full well that Daniel would continue to pray. Daniel did continue to pray three times a day and they were waiting for him. In this moment, they caught him and took him to the king and said that he had been praying to another God. The consequence of praying to another God was that they would be thrown into a lion's den. A lion's den was not just a place of lions, but was where they kept lions that were starving hungry and your death would be by starving lions. A terrible death. The king, although he loved Daniel, could not change his own word in what he had made before, so he was forced to send Daniel to the lion's den. In this time, God, seeing the faithfulness of Daniel, shut the mouths of the lions in the den. And Daniel spent the entire night with the lions and not one scratch, no harm was laid upon him. The the king was so worried about what happened that he came to the den in the morning to see if Daniel was alive. He found that Daniel surely was alive. And what happens from this moment is really cool Because the Bible tells us that because of this faithfulness of Daniel, we can read it in Daniel 6.25, that King Darius wrote to all the nations and peoples of every language in all the earth, may you prosper greatly. I issue a decree that in every part of my kingdom, people must fear and reverence the God of Daniel, for he is the living God and he endures forever and his kingdom will not be destroyed. His dominion will never end. You see, it's not immediate that we see the impact of prayer, nor does it mean that we may not come in harm's way. But what we see here in these scriptures and this story in the Bible is that prayer does change things. A whole nation was moved by the faithfulness of Daniel. His continual prayer, even in a terrible state, we see that God saw that faithfulness because Daniel was in relationship with him He shut the mouth of the lions and we see a whole nation begin to be changed by that moment. It's also really important that we surround ourselves with God. A great thing to do other than those that I've already said in prayer and devotion is to surround ourselves in worship of God. There are so many songs out there that you could quickly pull out a Spotify playlist and and get the best playlist going with all these fantastic worship songs. You see, the Bible tells us in Luke uh, chapter 6, 45, the good person out of the good treasure in his heart produces good and the evil person out of the evil treasure produces evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaks. Let the abundance of your life flow out of your heart. The book of Psalms, a huge book of poetry in the Bible. Many of these pieces of poetry were sung together in temples with one another. You see, the Bible talks a lot about worshipping God. And it's really important because our worship is an act of surrender. 
to let you surrender yourself every day in worship to your Father in heaven. And out of the abundance of your heart, it will speak. You will find yourself drawing closer to Him as you surrender to Him. Our relationship with God is set up for success when we're ready to devote ourselves to God. You may think, but how do I hear God? Well, here's a few verses that talk about it. John 10, 27 reads, My sheep, that's us, hear my voice, God's voice. And I know them, and they follow me, and I give them eternal life, and they will never perish, and no one, no one will scratch them out, snatch them out of my hand. Job 33 verse 14 reads, For God speaks in one way and in two, though man does not perceive it, in a dream and in a vision in the night, when deep sleep falls on a man while they slumber in their beds. And 1 Kings 19 11 reads, Then he said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, and behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind tore through the mountains and broke the rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still, small voice. You see, God speaks to us in many ways in dreams and in visions and in a still small voice and through the Word of God. We can always clarify the Word of God because it is always for good. It is encouraging and uplifting. Let's pray. Father in heaven, I pray that today we could be courageous people that would be ready to devote our lives to you. Lord, I pray for every single person hearing this now, that they would know in this moment that they can hear you, that you are speaking to them, and that you, through the entire tapestry of the Bible, all through every covenant that was made and in the final work of the new covenant through Jesus, that you are setting a precedent that you want to be in relationship with your creation, that you are here and that you took the first step and that we can respond in prayer, in reading the Word of God and in worship of you and that we will find clarity in your voice. God, I thank you that you are speaking to us new and fresh every day. I pray that you would fill every single person and set them on fire with your love. In your name, I pray. Amen. You know, there's also another way that God speaks to us, and that's the Holy Spirit. But we're going to need a whole week to talk about that. So next week, it's going to be really exciting. We're going to dive in to the Holy Spirit. I'm really excited for this one. See you next week.